Tak banyak orang di dunia yang tahu tentang Indonesia. Tapi siapa yang tak kenal Bali? Pantainya indah, budayanya kaya, dan banyak yang bisa dilakukan di Bali. Itu semua adalah daya tarik bagi jutaan pengunjung pulau ini. Namun, Bali bisa rusak karena pantai-pantai yang tadinya bersih, kini penuh dengan sampah. Bali memproduksi lebih dari 1.300 meter kubik plastik per hari. Luasnya setara dengan satu lapangan sepak bola yang setiap tahunnya tertumpuk sampah plastik hingga 67 meter. Pada episode ini, aku bakal ketemu dengan beberapa pegiat yang aktif mengangkat isu sampah di Bali. Hari ini ada acara namanya Commitment. Di sini kita akan melihat berbagai pameran, kita akan ngobrol dengan beberapa orang dan melihat produk-produk hasil daur ulang. Orang pertama yang akan aku temui adalah Daniel Mitchell. Dia adalah kepala bidang kreatif di Potato Head. Kita akan ngobrol-ngobrol lebih lanjut soal acara hari ini. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So is Potato Head always uh, environmentally conscious or is this a recent development? Um, well, Potato Head was built eight years ago. Um, and as you've probably seen, that was actually built using 4,000 um, recycled antique shutters. So that kind of ethos of recycling and reusing has sort of been part of the brand from day one. But I would say probably more the last four years, we've really, as a business, committed to really make a, make a change and, and act a lot more responsibly um, with our waste management. Why do you think Bali is the place for this movement to start? We're right on the ocean. I mean, it's a global, global thing, it's not just Bali. Um, but there is a lot of attention on Bali at the moment. It's become a bit of a hot spot of the world. And we want to keep it clean, you know? So today you have an event here called Commitment. Yeah, so Commitment is a pledge which is led by One Island, One Voice. They kind of started off doing their Bye Bye Plastic Bags campaign, which was very successful and gained a lot of exposure overseas. These guys are heading up this pledge and we're fully supporting them in that, um, you know, as partners and, and hosting the event today to celebrate that pledge. Sebelum mampir ke tempat pameran, aku dapat bocoran bahwa sedang ada kegiatan menarik yang berhubungan dengan limbah plastik. Tempatnya nggak jauh dari lokasi acara ini. Sekarang kita akan ngobrol-ngobrol sama Scott Fair and Price. Come more, more Hi Scott. Hi, hey. hey. Good Abby, Welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Yeah, so essentially, I mean, we we started uh, experimenting. I suppose is the best um, is the best word to use with how to turn essentially plastics into different types of things to okay. basically give them different value, more value mm -hmm. if we can. The plastics that no one really wants that doesn't have much value are the low density uh, plastics like these. Okay. You know. What does it mean, low density plastic? Plastics like these, low density polyethylene. Uh, they don't have much value. Okay. So what do you do with them? You know, and these are the things that are filling landfill. Mm -hmm. And these are the, one of the most common things that make their way into the oceans. So what this machine does, mm -hmm. it's going to basically make pretty close to one of those bricks. Uh, like this, this weighs about production. a kilo and a half. A kilo and a half. Yeah, one and a half kilos of plastic. Selain pakai mesin ini, bisa pakai kayu juga. Kayu yang tradisional, kayak drum. Drum terus kita bakar di bawahnya. Ada kayu, tapi itu cuma 30 menit sampai 40 menit udah jadi. Tinggal udah melted, dia plastiknya, tinggal campur pasir, langsung cetak. Kalau ini mungkin karena tebel kan mesinnya, karena tebel, karena, tapi kita aja jadi dia usah ngaduk-ngaduk gitu kan. Oh, kalau manual, kalau pakai manual kita terus. terus ngaduk ngaduknya jadinya agak gimana ya? Pegel ya? Pegel gitu loh. <laughs> kalau buat satu bag itu lumayan lama ya. Kalau, kalau tinggal, kayu, asapnya gimana? Bisa ditutup juga atau? Asapnya nggak ditutup, itu oh, di pantai polusi, kan terbuka ya? ya polusi ya, dia nggak bagus gitu. Jadi lebih bagus ya? Gasnya. So we can just walk around can and walk like around come and back here in an hour and see what it looks like in the end. Absolutely. All right. Yep. Thanks, so Scott. we'll come back, yeah? Yeah. Sekarang kita udah ada di tengah-tengah pameran Commitment. Salah satu pamerannya adalah yang di belakang kita. Hi. Hi. Afi. Nice to meet you. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, well, my name is Malati. I'm 17 years old, and together with my sister, I founded the organization Bye Bye Plastic Bags and ah. One Island One Voice. Is there a way to look at plastic um, differently? One of the most easiest things that we can all start with today is really making that difference in our own lifestyles, bringing your own bag to the supermarket. 
or you know saying no to that plastic straw. I think each and every single one of us has the power to be a part of the difference, be a part of the solution and um, you know that starts with just educating yourself in the sense of what solutions are already around you and what's missing. Can you tell us a little bit more about Bali's beach biggest cleanup? Yeah, so um, it's actually we did our first Bali's Biggest Beach cleanup in 2017. This year we had 20,000 people actively involved in 120 locations and in one single day we collected over 65 tons of just plastic waste. We're not looking at it as a burden but we're looking at it more as an opportunity and I think that's so important and I think that's a mindset that each and every single one of us, doesn't matter what age, should start embracing because I think together, you know, we work stronger. Di pameran ini, kita mendapatkan perspektif baru soal sampah plastik. Hi, Hi I'm Afi from Vice Indonesia. Seita, nice to meet you. I'm the founder and director of Mata, and Mata is a materials research design studio where we design, advise, educate, and communicate what materials are and the potential of them. So, when did Mata start, and what's your goal? Like the purpose of having this company? The purpose is to bring more awareness to what materials are and can be, but also to implement them more responsibly across multiple industries. So can you show me what plastics can be? Yeah, sure. So this is probably the best booth to show you. Okay. So this is the designer Marie back home. She's used waste from the Thames River in London. And then what she's then done is created it into a 3D printed filament. Wow. Which she's then 3D printed. So these are all very experimental ideas of what plastic can actually do. Setelah berkeliling pameran, aku jadi terinspirasi untuk peduli terhadap lingkungan. Sekarang, aku ingin mencari tahu apa sih yang bisa mulai aku lakukan dari rumah sendiri. Eko Bali ini kita uh, perusahaan waste collection. Sama. Perusahaan ya? Ben? Ya, kita perusahaan for profit dan kita bisnisnya itu uh, waste collection service sama composting. Jadi kita kalau misalnya ntar ada yang menjadi klien kita, kayak misalnya uh, bisa dari rumah tangga atau dari restoran atau hotel, nanti kita akan kasih dua bin ini. Jadi ini composting bin kita, sisa-sisa makanan, ini ntar dimasukin ke sini, terus nanti ditaro, dilapisin sama tanah lagi, terus dilapisin sama jerami, termasuk kita pakai sistem vermicompost, jadi kita pakai cacing juga. Kalau udah penuh, bisa langsung dikeluarin, ditaruh di kebun. Terus ini dibuat lagi? Terus ini dibuat lagi. Ah, okay. yeah. Konsep upcycle ini sering banget saya dengar ya, ketika kalau misalnya ngobrol sama NGO-NGO atau teman-teman yang mendukung uh, lingkungan. Ini sebenarnya konsep apa sih mas, upcycling ini? Jadi kalau recycle tuh misalnya dari plastik, uh, terus nanti mereka daru ulang jadi biji-biji plastik yang kecil, terus nanti mereka bikin lagi. Tapi kalau oh. upcycle itu, um, jadi prosesnya nggak serumit itu lah, masih dari botol, jadi bentuknya botol masih lagi. sama. Fungsinya Fungsi yang diperbanyak ditambah. ya? Fungsinya okay. diperbanyak, betul. Kita emang pengen mengencourage orang untuk melakukan pemilahan sampah dari sumber. Karena itu yang paling penting sebetulnya. Kalau misalnya kita mau mengurangi sampah. Karena emang misi kita itu responsible waste management. Dan kalau menurut kita sih itu dimulai dari pemilahan sampah dari awal. Aku kagum dengan Eko Bali. Bisnis mereka tak hanya mendaur ulang sampah, tetapi juga menghasilkan keuntungan. Barusan Scott ngabarin, kita akan mengolah plastik tadi ke tahapan berikutnya. Prosesnya ternyata sederhana. Kita cuma perlu mencampurkan pasir ke dalam lelehan plastik. Setelah dicetak, cool. batu bata ini bisa digunakan seperti batu bata lainnya. So that's pretty much what you're after. Last one. Jadi kita mesti rada cepat sebelum nanti kering dan dingin, terus nggak bisa dibentuk lagi. Just gonna grip this, and put, okay. pull it off the table, and turn it upside down. Ready, yep. set, and cool. Whoa. Cool. Look at that. Well done. Ternyata ini mesinnya sederhana banget dan tadi Scott bilang kita bisa pakai kompor sendiri di rumah dan kita bisa beli panci khusus biar nggak kecampur sama makanan lain dan udah nanti kita bisa campurin pakai semen atau pasir terus kita bisa punya plastik break kita sendiri. 
ya kita udah keliling tadi, kita udah lihat pameran-pamerannya, kita udah ngobrol sama penyelenggara, aktivis, seniman, perancang, dan melihat produk-produknya juga. Dan hari ini kita semua bisa belajar bahwa ternyata ada banyak banget cara untuk mengolah plastik dan sampah lainnya. Saat ini aku sedang berada di tempat pembuangan akhir Suwung, Bali. Nah ini adalah tempat di mana semua sampah dari seluruh Bali berakhir. Ini saatnya kita tak lagi memandang sampah plastik, suatu benda yang kita pakai sekali lalu langsung dibuang, melainkan sebagai sumber daya yang bisa kita terus manfaatkan. Kita perlu mengubah pola pikir soal sampah plastik dan perlahan mengubah kebiasaan konsumsi plastik demi keberlangsungan Bali dan seluruh Indonesia.